Okay, I was online last night looking for another electronics project to make, and I went to techlib.com, www.techlib.com, and on the bottom of the page you're going to see it, uh, it's going to say like Pilar's page, Karen's page, and Craig's page. You want to click on Pilar, and you're going to find this schematic right here. It happens to be very good. It works great. It's a FM loop antenna transmitter. It's basically just a regular FM transmitter, all right? But instead of having a wire for the antenna, which is usually a pain in the ass because it hangs out of the box, this is a loop antenna. It's a design that's been copied out of those little FM transmitters you can get like Best Buy, Circuit City, that you can hook up to like an MP3 player, and then you can broadcast your music throughout the house. So this is the same type of a design. And it's not, not too bad of a circuit. It only took me about two hours to put the whole thing together once I got all the parts together. I had to figure out how I wanted to lay it out. I wanted to get all my components in one side here because the 9-volt battery is going to be sitting in this blank section here and a little to the left when I put it in my project box. So I wanted to make sure I get everything in the right spot. But in here you have there's two transistors. There's a 19 NTE199 or a BC547C. And actually there's two of those, the same trans transistor. One is used for the audio input going into the oscillator. And this one here is for the oscillator. Uh, I didn't have a 33 picofarad trimmer, so I used a 10 to 65, which worked fine. But all the other components, are, there's like 20 components. It's fairly simple to put together. This is what it looks like when it's in the box. Well, eventually mine will look like that. My battery is going to be vertical, though, in this corner to fill this space. I got an on-off switch right here, LED indicator for the power. Right down here, this little potentiometer is for, for adjusting how much sound gets drawn into this mic into the circuit. So if it's a little garbled, you could turn this the other direction to reduce the amount of sound going in. I got it set right now where it's perfect. This trimmer adjusts the frequency. So when I have this all together in a little case, it'll just be the switch with a red LED and a little pinhole for the screwdriver if I wanted to change the frequency to reach in to that trimmer right there. The audio, I'm not going to touch. There's no reason to touch it. It works perfect where I have it. With a 9-volt fully charged battery, this is a nickel metal hydride. This is like 9.4 volts right now. I just charged it. You can get crystal clear reception. And the reason why I chose this, because it's stable. Now, my other ones are also stable, but I got this big, long antenna hanging out, and I don't need that. I want something I can put in a box and just lay on a counter and walk away, and then perfect, and it, you don't have to move it around but if, and worry about an uh, antenna uh, draping all over the place. So basically, with this design, it's a stable design. The frequency stays fairly stable. And I checked it out, and it does work really, really good. The range is crystal clear up to about 200, 250 feet. When you get beyond the 200, 250 feet, then you get a little bit of static. And of course, the further away you go, the more static you get. But if you use a good radio, like this one right here, this is an Eaton, it's got the crank generator, water resistant radio. This is a really good receiver, it does everything, shortwave AM, FM. You can get really good reception with this. And if you use a car radio, you can get good reception. But a lot of other radios, like the cheesy ones you find in like MP3 players and stuff like that, you're not going to get good reception. So you've got to use either a car radio or one of these smaller radios and you can get really good reception with it. And the current draw is 12 milliamps, which is not much at all. I'll turn it on right now. I'll show you. Turn this on. All right, there's the power indicator. Now I'm going to come over here. This is just a uh, 200 megahertz to 3 gigahertz uh, detector to let you know if it's transmitting. And yeah, she's transmitting right now. See, so I'll back away and it goes away. All right, so that's on. This is my frequency counter. I'm going to turn this on. It'll tell me what frequency you were at. 
Let me just go like that. All right. We're at 87, roughly 87.7. Now I could adjust this with the trimmer. So you'll see, I'm going to go over here now. I'll, I'm going to go here to adjust it. But you'll just watch this. All right, 94.5. 113.7, I think is the highest this will go. 113.8. No, it goes high. It goes 115. 114.5 is the high end. And the low end, I'm going to turn it all the other way now. Low end, we're talking 61. So it's got a pretty big span from 61 megahertz all the way up to 114. But what you want to make sure is that, now this doesn't transmit that far, like I said, only a couple of hundred feet to 200. You can get 300 if you don't mind a little bit of static. But you're not going to really interfere with anybody's radio, which is good. You don't want everybody knocking on your door. But just make sure you choose a frequency on your radio where there's nothing on it, that there's no broadcasting going on. If you do that, no one will ever complain because they're not going to be listening to that frequency anyway. So just make sure you choose a frequency that no one's using, and you're good to go. Simple circuit. It'll go in a housing like this plastic one right here that I printed on. And that's the full circuit. Oh, my.